Welcome to Miss Panda Chinese, and we are having an interview with our great friend、um, Yoshito. And Yoshito actually was here not long ago talking about his first book. And he's a multilingual dad on Instagram, and also you know he is working on a big project. He's been really busy for the past several months, and then we want to check in with him to see how is his family's multilingual journey. It's been going because I think he recently had a big trip, and、uh, we want to hear from him with an update. But first, hey Yoshito, really happy to have you here with us. Hi Amanda, thank you very much for having me back. Oh、uh, wow, we're so excited! <laughs> well, tell us a little bit about yourself. I said, especially maybe we have some new bilingual and multilingual families that they haven't met you yet, and then please give us a, a brief introduction. Yeah, so I'm、um, Yoshito Dalman Shimamori. I'm uh, mainly a language teacher, so I teach French and Spanish in the secondary school in in England.、Uh, I'm half French and half Japanese. I grew up in France,、uh, and I learned Japanese from my mom and from school because I went to Saturday school as well. And yeah, and now、uh, I'm also helping multilingual families. Uh, and I wrote, so like you said, the first book, which was to help parents、uh, teach their children to read and write in their home languages in a fun way. And this book I'm, I'm、uh, working on this time is for children themselves.、Uh, yeah, but we're going to talk a bit about a bit more about that. And I'm raising my two sons、uh, in three languages with French,、uh, Korean, and Japanese and English. So、mm -hmm. the Korean is from my wife. Yes! Wow, this is exciting. <laughs> Look at your multilingual and multicultural background. So,、yeah. uh, Japanese and French for yourself, and you learn Japanese with your mother, and also Saturday Japanese school. I think、yeah. for a lot of Chinese families, the Sunday、uh, weekend、um, Mandarin school is also a lot of times a part of their.、Um, yeah. Lifestyle, yeah, yes, and then、uh, you talk about you are a Spanish and French teacher in England, and also you're raising your two children. How old are they now?、Uh, nine and seven. Nine and seven, and they you are raising them with three languages:、um, French,、um, Korean, and also English. So. This is a big job, and you have been sharing a lot of fun <laughs> activities and tips, and your trials of all different kind of uh, uh, tips and sharing that on social media. So、yeah. I am wondering, well, any update? Because last time when you came here, you talking about all the activities because in your book,、um, you know, the guide, the parents' guide to raising multi. Uh, my literate、uh, children.、Yeah. In this book, you offered over seventy activities for parents to use. So、yeah. let us give us an update. What's going on、uh, for the past a few week, a few months about、uh, your journey with your children? I guess the big, big change is that now my sons、uh, read a lot more fluently in Korean, and they want to read themselves. So they are becoming independent readers in Korean as well. Uh, and that's mainly because we went to Korea, and that made Korean a bit more relevant to them. And and they spent a lot of time with the family, and so yeah, the language became more like came back to the surface, I guess.、Uh, and yeah, and before, so I think what was the problem is that they we didn't have that many books that they were interested in, in Korean. So French, it was quite easy to find things on Amazon.、Uh, Korean was a bit more difficult,、uh, but when we went to Korea, we bought lots of books, and now they are reading quite a lot in Korean as well. So that's the the main the major thing, I guess. That's different from.、Before. Wow, I think you really hit something very important. You said before. Maybe there's less relevancy because you went to、yeah. Korea. Then there's a need, and it's relevant, and it becomes a part of life. Everything mom and dad talk about suddenly is real <laughs>、yeah. with with the grandparents and with the relatives, and they hear Korean everywhere when when they visit Korea, and also books. Yeah, yeah, I also think books are very important. So if we have good access, we have access to a lot of books in the target language, the home language, that will be very helpful. 
So did you did you come home with a a a, a suitcase of books? <laughs> I wouldn't say a suitcase, but I think about twenty books. Uh, we just and we we so we found books that they they love. So we just passed an order. Just like an hour ago, we received a big box with other books as well. Yes. Um, yeah. So yeah, we're not going to give everything at once so that they keep getting new things and they want to read new things. Yes. Uh, yeah. So for Korean as a target language, one of the target languages, where do you start? Like for Chinese, it's the same thing. Where do you start? What kind of books um, do you recommend? The parents to get when kids are first starting reading, like for I your guess, son. Yeah, when they are first starting, I guess uh, if it's just uh, to learn, if it's to learn to read and write, first we need to interest them. So it doesn't. It can be like children's books that we read to our children, uh, so they get familiar with it, but they don't need to read. And then we can wait for them to do the first step. And ask like, oh, what's this? Or try to recognize things, etc. So to get their interest, and from there, uh, we can start with words and small games based on characters or letters, and build up to the words, and then we have sentences. We need to make sure that they are more um, at ease, and we don't push them too much. So when they are at ease and they feel confident, they're going to move themselves. But if we try to push them forward when they are not ready, they they're going to try to get back, and it's going to be more difficult. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So to start, I think games are great. And for example, my second son uh, learned to read. Uh, oh, it was in French, but it's mainly through um, uh, how do you say uh, treasure hunts. And for my yeah. So and then we we got into games etc. as well. But the main thing that he loved was treasure hunts mm -hmm. and reading like small words to see. Okay, bed. So okay, I'm going to get to check if there is something on the bed or uh, under the table and like short things and give a reward straight away. So like a treasure or the next clue etc. to to get his interest and and the practice. Yes. I think we're talking about the guidance here. Make it really interesting. Make it really fun to instill yeah. joy in learning. And when they're having fun, it's not really learning because the playing is yeah. learning. And this yeah. is how we design the play. That's why you have uh, you, your first book is basically yeah. activity based. And want people, want kids, and want parents to be able to get engaged with the kids with the language in a language that they want to introduce to the kids. That's fabulous. So you also emphasize a lot about culture in language learning. Would you like to touch on that? So I think, for example, for us, uh, we pass on, uh, well, they have three languages, French, Korean, and English, English from the school and the environment, uh, and French for me and Korean for my wife. But we still wanted them to know that they are Japanese as well. Um, so for the Japanese, uh, at first, when I started on the, the journey, like raising my children with multiple languages, uh, I thought it wasn't possible for one parent to teach two languages. Uh, so I just went with French because it's easier for me to speak in French. Mm -hmm. Later on, I learned that it was possible, but it demands a lot of organization and a lot of time. So I don't regret not passing on Japanese from the start, uh, but I want for their identity to understand that they are also Japanese and I do that by telling stories about my family or when I was young and I, I was um, visiting my family or friends in Japan. Uh, yeah, and we watch also cartoons that are Japanese but translated into Korean uh, so that they know it's, uh, it's from Japan. Uh, when my mom comes as well, she reads um, uh, traditional tales, Japanese tales, and then she translates into French. So they are used to seeing Japanese written, they hear, uh, they hear some Japanese as well, but they, they know that they are Japanese. And yeah, I think that's important for me as well. And I guess for them, it's more owning their identity if they know and they feel that they are Japanese as well. I think that's a, something um, quite important. You talk about identity. And I think that when the culture 
is a part of uh, the family, I think the kids will be able to connect it. So how do you make the connection? Sometimes it's with the language, but because you already have three languages at home, so um, Japanese become an important part in the culture part. And then gradually, yeah. you know, they will be able to kind of combine things and be more interested maybe later in life. I yeah. love that. So we're going to talk about a very exciting campaign, an exciting project you're doing, another a book project. So yeah. after the release of the Parents Guide to Raising Multi-Literate Children, and that's a book I talk about that was uh, 70 and more fun, engaging, and uh, purposeful activities to um, help them to learn a language, not just to speak, but to read yeah. and write. So after that project, you are working on another book project, and then this time it's called in search of the lost words yeah. and i think parents are going to be so excited about it can you can you tell us a little bit about this project yeah uh maybe i can start by saying why i had this idea yeah uh, but first so when my son uh was starting to read and being interested in reading and writing with the games we were doing uh I was using uh, wordless books, so they were just pictures, uh, and we we're trying to work out what they could be saying, etc. And uh, one of the things I did is to create posts, uh, to write on post-it notes different things that people would say, uh, stick them on the, at the bottom of the page, and he would need to find who is saying what and apply the speech bubble basically. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he he started to write them and. I saw that he was engaged in that and it was a fun way for him to write. And I thought, okay, maybe I can create a book where the child wants to write. And so for multilingual, multilingual child, I wanted the story to be relevant as well. So the story is about a, a girl who grew up bilingual with two languages, uh, but she, uh, little by little, she started to speak only one language. And we meet her when she's 14 years old and she can barely, understand her dad's language uh, and when she goes on holiday to her dad's family uh, she feels a bit isolated because she doesn't really understand what people are saying and she doesn't dare speaking even if it's easy words like thank you that she knows she doesn't really say it in the home language uh, and then she one night she travels back in time mysteriously uh, and she ends up uh, so all alone without her dad who understands her, so all alone. Uh, and she meets her grandpa when he's eight years old. Uh, and then there is an adventure where they have to save uh, her great great grandma. Uh, I won't tell too much about the story, but uh, I wanted to create a story that's engaging and relevant for the, the child, uh, for, for them to, to want to write as well, to contribute to the story. So there is a lot about writing but there is a lot about that small clues that could be conversation starters with their parents when they are reading the book together so it could be cultural it could be so about the food for example that people eat it could be objects that they find in their grandparents house it could be the type of scenery they see when they go on holidays in grandparents country uh, but just small conversation starters and all this fun to to, to give a few lessons of uh, some perspective on what it is to be a multilingual child. Uh, and also that we don't need to speak two languages perfectly to be called multilingual. Uh, if we understand one uh, and uh, if we can speak and understand one, but only understand one, not really speak it, it's also being bilingual. Uh, yeah, so a few, few lessons uh, in there, sprinkled in the story, uh, in a fun story for the child. I, I when I read your um, Kickstarter uh, campaign information uh, you, that you shared with me, I thought this is a great project because it can be so engaging for kids and kids in different level of bilingual um, situation proficiency. They can actually all be a part of using this book. Like parents yeah. can use this book, you know, for different levels of proficiency. Um, and then you talk about a bilingualism. You talk about it can be a this book can be a good way to to kind of um, have a 
conversation starter and also can encourage kids to write doesn't matter short or small sentences yeah. or it's just words so yeah. it's a very make the kids feel very relaxed and comfortable and then you talk about they need to learn at ease yeah. <laughs> well, i think we all agree that i think kids kids we all think like we all know because we practice this we know um kids learn the best when they are relaxed so well we we are the same, right? We learn the best when we are more relaxed. If we are yeah. so nervous or so intense, it's very hard to learn something new. So yeah. for um, your book project, the Kickstarter campaign in search of the lost words, you talk about um, well time travel. This is very exciting. You talk about the child is Anna, the the leading character. Anna is fourteen years old, even though she grew up by bilingual but she is getting a hard time to use the target language more and more. Why yeah. is that? Is that because a lot of times when we're getting older, we just assume when you grew up bilingual, then when you're older, you should know the language better? What, what's the disconnect here? I guess it, it, we can get better and better if we practice, like we speak and we read, etc. Uh, but if we don't use the language, like everything, we start forgetting it. Um, so yeah, it's uh, for for her, and it's I guess the the case for many multilingual children, is because like even their parents understand, for example, English if they live in an English speaking country, why would they bother speaking uh, in the in the home language? Mm -hmm. And maybe sometimes the parents think, okay, they're speaking to me in English, so I start replying in English, then they don't they don't hear the so the children don't hear the home language as well. And only when they go back in the in the parents' country or the grandparents' country, uh, so I guess that's how, in many cases, it gets lost. Yeah. And I teach in a school where there are many uh, bilingual children, uh, so who grew up bilingual. Uh, there are some who can speak it, and uh, they're very fluent in it. Some a bit less, and some say I just understand, but I can't really speak it. Um, and I can see as well that there's a big difference that like the students who uh, can speak their language, they, and, and there is a club as well for their home language, which is mm -hmm. uh, Bengali in our school. Uh, I can say they are a lot more prouder of their identity uh, and they, yeah, they own their identity. So being Bangladeshi and English uh, mm -hmm. in the case of the students in my school. The idea you were talking about is they need to have, we, need to constantly feed the kids with the vocabulary, with the expressions they need to talk about, to use in the target language. So I think this book, In Search of a Lost Words, is a tool to help parents to do that. So yeah. can you share um, the cover? Can you review the cover of the book? Yeah. Right. Okay, let me We're share excited. the... Yes, look at this, In Search of the lost words. And this is a Kickstarter campaign Yoshito is working on and we need your support. Yoshito needs your support. And this is a book that he's been putting a lot of efforts on, would like to help um, parents who are raising multilingual children to be able to use this as a tool to help kids to read, write, and also have conversations in different levels on your bilingual journey. Thank you, yeah. Yoshito, for sharing. Reveal the, the book cover with us. And okay. uh, how can the parents um, help you and to make this a reality <clears throat> and to become a multilingual hero? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that, that's one of the booklets I have. But uh, So I, I, I'm going to go through a Kickstarter campaign, which is a crowdfunding platform. So basically I have, I had the idea, I put already some funds uh, and, but it costs a lot to illustrate a book, to get it printed, etc. cetera. So uh, it's a way for me to put it out there. And then on the Kickstarter platform, people can, can pledge. And as a thank you, I'm going to give different rewards. Um, and yeah, but the, the main thing is really the more people know about it, the more people uh, might pledge and might help raise enough funds to get the illustrations of the book finished uh, and the printing and the shipping, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, so yeah, two things for the parents, if they could pledge and or 
share the world around uh, with similar families who are trying to raise their children uh, bilingual or and especially those who are on the multi-literacy journey so who are trying to learn to read and write in their home language yes. and then i know you have um, also small levels actually people can actually be included in the book can you talk about yeah. that so there are different rewards uh, and one of them yes like you say is to be part and illustrated as part of the book uh, so there is a scene there is a page where there are there's a scene outdoors in the market and people can be part of the character. So next to the hero of the, of the story. Uh, and, but there are only five spaces. So it could be one adult accompanied by one or two children. Uh, and there are five of them. And there are also other rewards like uh, uh, one that's just going to be available for the first two days of the campaign. It's a little booklet that helps children understand how they can master their uh, bilingual abilities to turn it into a superpower. So we talk often about uh, bilingual children being superheroes, but we don't really give them the tools. We just say you're a superhero because you speak many languages, but it's not just about speaking many languages. And in this booklet, uh, so I give the, I explain the tools and I have interviews with two um, real life uh, multilingual, super multilingual people uh, who explain how being multilingual helped them in life. So yes. That's, yeah, it's available just the, for the first two days. So if parents want to have it as well, uh, it's like an extra bonus. I'm, I'm throwing it in there. Uh, yeah. This is a, a great project. And I think it's just, it sounds very engaging. And I know it will be engaging with all the things everybody can see on multilingual dad on uh, your Instagram and also the resources that you've been providing and the uh, uh, library for multilinguals.com. I think these um, information and resources are invaluable. The way you present raising multilingual children is practical, is yeah. fun, is project-based, is activity-based. So for this book, um, it's another Another way to help parents to use activities and conversation, not just reading, writing, but also speaking. So we're putting everything together. And your words about being multilingual is a superpower. I think they need to know what they can do, not just what we tell them. Yeah, <laughs> so they that is to, not... <laughs> they need to understand from themselves what it means and how they can get to make it a superpower. Yes. So. It's wonderful. So why don't you tell us again where people can support you and how they can support you? So they can support me by going on Kickstarter. And so I think they find the link in your description. Yes. Or something. But yeah, if they go there and if it's before the, the Kickstarter campaign launches on the 17th of October, they can get a notification to make sure that they don't miss the start. So yeah, if you could pledge on the first two days maybe that would be great and you would get as well the the superpower booklet for your children yes okay so everyone well the first two days are very important so we definitely would like you to go ahead and then support yoshito in search of the lost words kickstarter kingpin and then all the links will be below somewhere left right and below so you can look for it and then participate and wait for the notification. But there's nothing you need to wait because Yoshito actually has a lot of resources for you. Join him on Instagram and also his website. Everything is down here so you can uh, use right away and have a great journey of raising multilingual children. Thank you so much, Yoshito. Thank you, Amanda.